Hey, hello, what's up, students and my prestigious listeners. This is Asmita Sachdeva, and today we are gonna study the chapter Mother's Day by J. B. Priestley. Um, before starting, I want every one of you to please subscribe my channel and please, please, please give a thumbs up to it, and hope you like this video. So let's start. And another thing before we start is that we are starting the chapter Mother's Day. So I request that all the students must first of all read the drama that is the chapter very thoroughly because this would be just for revision and first the NCRT point of view you should get clear. So let's start. Mother's Day is a play about a mother who remains busy in her course throughout the day and is taken for granted by her family members and uh, what happens is that with the help of her extraordinary friend we can say that uh, she is able to establish her importance in her family uh, if you have read the chapter then you know what i am speaking about so when the plane opens we see Mrs. Pearson. Uh, she is talking to her friend Mrs. Fitzgerald. Mrs. Fitzgerald had been predicting Mrs. Pearson's fate as the play opens. Uh, Mrs. Pearson is a pleasant but worried looking woman while Mrs. Fitzgerald is older, heavier and a strong intimidating personality. These could be added in the characteristics a question comes so what would you add mrs pearson is a worried looking woman she is timid she is nervous while mrs fitzgerald is older heavier strong confident and has an intimidating personality mrs fitzgerald tells mrs pearson to assert her herself as the head of the family she adds that it is the high time now that mrs pearson's let her, mrs pearson sorry let her family know how important she is to them she has to tell it now uh, but as i have told earlier mrs pearson is a very worried woman she is not blaming her family all directly so she covers up by saying that she that it is apologetic to say that her family was not very thoughtless the family was just selfish but she loved them so anything she she means her mrs fitzgerald advice mrs pearson should be the correct step uh, she felt that they didn't mean to be so terrible as they were However, Mrs. Fitzgerald insists that they ought to learn to treat her appropriately. She tells her not to run after them all time and take their orders as if she were the servant in the house. Exactly. Now she is her friend, and when the when Mrs. Pearson would be telling all the things, all the complaints she goes through while conversing with each other. Then obviously Mrs. Fitzgerald would have, uh, like, just she would have got that she would have been treated like a servant in the house. So she wants to help her friend because she stayed at home at every night while every one of the members enjoy themselves. They go out. She feels that this situation was harmless for all of them. Mrs. Pearson agrees with Mrs. Fitzgerald. but is uncertain whether it would have any effect on them she does not want to create any unpleasantness in the family moreover she has thought of it often but does not know how to begin she glances at her watch and jumps up to cook for her children and her husband as they would be home any minute but what happens now which is different from all the other days is that mrs fitzgerald holds her back 
and tells her to begin asserting herself immediately. Mrs. Pearson is a little hesitant as she is not sure of herself. Mrs. Fitzgerald offers to help her but Mrs. Pearson is reluctant as her family would hate an outsider's interference. But Mrs. Fitzgerald has an idea. So what the idea was, it is a little funny but everything goes well till the end. So what's the idea is that Mrs. Fitzgerald tells that they could exchange their bodies. That is, instead of looking like themselves, they would look like the other. Means Mrs. Fitzgerald would look like Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Pearson would look like Mrs. Fitzgerald. Uh, so what happens that Mrs. Fitzgerald asks her to hold her hands and to keep quiet for a minute. They stare at each other and Mrs. Fitzgerald then hold her hand and asks her to keep quiet for a minute. They stare at each other and Mrs. Fitzgerald mumbles Ashtata dum ashtata lum ashtata lum dum bona. This was the actual. <laughs> Actually it is very funny but okay. So she mumbles this phrase and they assume each other's personality. They have Their roles have now reversed. Mrs. Pearson now becomes bold and dominating and what happens to Mrs. Fitzgerald? She is nervous. She is trembling. Now let's come to the first evident change. Uh, it was that Mrs. Pearson notices the cigarette in Mrs. Fitzgerald's mouth. Snatches it and puts it in her own. Mrs. Fitzgerald now with Mrs. Mrs. Pearson's personality looks down at herself and sees that her body has changed and screamed, screams out in fright. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald is nervous and Mrs. Pearson is confident. Mrs. Fitzgerald is afraid what would happen if they could not change back to their original forms, obviously. But Mrs. Pearson, which is the real Mrs. Fitzgerald, jokes that she would enjoy herself more as Mrs. Fitzgerald. She then assures her friend that they would change back easily whenever they want. Okay, now what would I be doing is that their names are coming very, very oftenly. So, I'll be calling Mrs. Fitzgerald, Mrs. F and Mrs. Pearson, Mrs. P. Okay, I hope this goes correct with all of us. Now Mrs. F is nervous and Mrs. P is confident. So now Mrs. P is playing patience and smoking when her daughter Doris Pearson, a pretty girl in her early 20s, enters. She tells her mother to iron her yellow silk dress as she had to wear it the night she notices her mother sitting at the table playing patience and smoking to her amazement. A person who should have been making their tea right now is smoking at the point. She asks her what she is doing. Mrs. P answers her complacently that she was not whitewashing the ceiling. Uh, here the sarcasm is put forward. So, just uh, take this in mind. This could come in exam. That how is the drama so sarcastic? Now she adds that there is no, no law against smoking. This is another phrase which could be added in the sarcastic one question. She also tells her that she had not made her tea and would have her meal at the Clarendon. Doris cannot believe her ears. She's angry and insists that her mother make tea and iron her dress. However, Mrs. Pearson firmly tells her not to talk rubbish as she was working twice as hard and getting no wages or thanks for it. Yes, this was the real punch on her face. She then asks Doris 
where she wanted to wear her yellow dress too. Doris tells her that she was going out with Charlie Spence. Charlie Spence was actually Doris' boyfriend. Mrs. Pearson tells her to find someone better than the buck-toothed, half-witted man. Now, what do you mean by buck-toothed, half-witted man? Is a short-heighted man. Okay, she is actually making fun of him. Doris is offended and runs out. Mrs. Pearson laughs and started, starts putting the cards together when her son Cyril walks in and asks for tea. She behaves nonchalantly, but he insists on her getting the tea and his clothes ready. He reminds her of the promise she had made that morning to mend his clothes. He's surprised to hear that she doesn't like mending. She goes on to tell that when he does not like something, he does not do it. So she was doing the same. She had planned to do the same with the same person. So Cyril could not believe his ears again like Doris. It was something different from the everyday chores. Just then, Doris enters and Mrs. Pearson, seeing that Dor Doris has been crying, says that she wouldn't look so pale and red-eyed even for Charlie Spence. Doris accuses her mother of making her cry. Doris and Cyril are even more surprised when her mother asks for strong beer. When Mrs. Pearson walks out, Doris and Cyril discuss that there is something wrong, of course. Doris tells Cyril that she was smoking and playing cards when she came in. Doris feels that she looks a little different, but Cyril has not noticed that. Um, they try to fathom what the problem with her is, whether she had gone crazy or had a concussion. They laugh at the idea of, ha of her having gone crazy and decide to wait till the father returns. Now the big person will solve the problem. Mrs. Pearson returns carrying a bottle of beer and a half filled glass. Now uh, one thing I want to tell is that this is not there in the NCRT. But this play which we are studying is actually not the full play in uh, NCRT, but with all the good students want to study extra. So I am al always insisting everyone to study extra and each good student just studies anything they are given. It is just good for her mind to get extra things, you know. She tells them to tell her, now back to the chapter. She tells them to tell her the reason for their amusement. Doris retorts that she had never understood their jokes. Mrs. Pearson rudely tells her that she was bored at their jokes even before they were born. <laughs> Another sarcasm. Uh, Doris is tearful and Mrs. Pearson tells her that all they do is come in, ask for something, Go out again and return when there is no one, nowhere else to go. Cyril again asks for tea, telling her that he had been working for an eight-hour day. Now let's see what was her reply. Mrs. Pearson says that she had done her eight hours and henceforth she would work only for 40 hours a week. At the weekend, she would have her two days off, like every job person has. Both the children are surprised. Doris tries to reconfirm if the mother would do, not do anything on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Mrs. Pearson replies that she might make a bed or two and do a bit of cooking, you know, as a favor. But that would be a conditional um, to the fact that she is asked very nicely and thanked for everything and uh, means generally like the generally made fuss of her. It should not happen like that.
Mrs. Pearson tells her daughter that in case they do not like the arrangement, she would go elsewhere for the weekend. Means no work on the weekend. Full two day off. When Doris questions her, Mrs. Pearson tells that they had no right to question her as to where she would go and with whom she would go. These were the replies that she had got from them and she was certainly a lot older and better able to look after herself. When Doris breaks into tears, she tells that she is not a baby and she was old enough to go out with Charlie Spence. She ought to be old enough to behave properly. Uh, then what happens is that uh, Mr. George Pearson, who is Mrs. Pearson's husband, enters. He notices Doris crying and he wants to know what's the cause. Uh, then Doris tells him that he would soon know the cause. George then notices Mrs. P sipping beer and is shocked. He expresses his surprise and tells her that it doesn't look right. There's something wrong. Like, it, is, it was not like this every day. Uh, then Mrs. P replies that it is a nice change. And it had been quite some time since he was surprised at her. Uh, when he tells her that he did not want tea as he was going for a special snooker mat night at the club, she told him that he was not ready in the first place. This means that he does not want the tea and she and she too did not prepare the tea anyway. Uh, now he is angry but she reminds him that he was annoyed because he, did, he didn't get the tea that he did not even want. Means there was no point of getting angry on this useless event. Uh, then she adds that if he did that at the bar, that is, he did not ask for the beer but showed irritation since it had not been poured out for him, they would have loved him even more than they did. George was indigent, I'm sorry, George was indignant and she added that he was one of their standing jokes and was called Pompey Ompey Pearson because they thought that uh, he was slow and pompous. Now she was surprised that he spent so much time at a place where people always ridiculed him, leaving his wife at home. She was just poking him. Uh, just then what happens is that Cyril enters and George tries to confirm these facts with him too. Cyril is embarrassed and uh, reluctant that, but admits to it. Uh, George is shocked and Cyril accuses his mother of not being fair and sensitive. She says that sometimes it does people good to have their feelings hurt like they do to her the same way. The truth ought not to hurt anybody for long. If George did not go to the club so often, perhaps people there would stop laughing at him. This is as simple as possible. Uh, when Cyril disagrees with her, she tells him that his opinion was irrelevant as he knows nothing and spends too much time and money at greyhound races, dirt tracks and ice shows. There is a knock on the door. Cyril tells his mother that silly old Mrs. Fitzgerald, Mrs. F. from next door is there. She informs her son that Mrs. F. was a very nice woman with a lot more sense than he would ever have. Uh, you all know why, why she was saying this. <laughs> she invites Mrs. F. in. Then Mrs. F. has come to inquire if all was well. Then Sahil said it was not. Mrs. P. insists that all was well. Uh, when Mrs. P. shouts at Cyril, Mrs. F. protests, but Mrs. P. tells her not to interfere. Like, uh, here what is happening that she was the mother of uh, Cyril, right? So, 
every mother wants to protect her son so that uh, nobody shouts on her nobody is punishing him or her so same ways the real mrs p was doing when cyril goes to the kitchen mrs p assures that they that she had only w- done what was required putting them back in the place mrs p tells mrs f that she had told george what they thought was what they thought of him at the club and assures her that all would turn out well george enters and uneasily asks mrs f if she had just dropped in mrs f in her nervousness calls him george because uh, you know she is re- in reality his wife and mrs uh, she is in reality his wife mrs pearson who is in mrs fitzgerald body that's why uh, now george is surprised but mrs pearson covers up for mrs f saying that his name was george and not duke of edinburgh <laughs> another sarcastic point George is angry and he lists all that she had done since evening. Mrs F is upset but George tells her to stay out. Mrs P defends Mrs F saying that George had no mem- manners as he had just marched in and sat down without even wishing her. She asks George to go to the club. George loses his temper and asks Mrs P What was wrong with her? Just tell me now. What is happening since evening? Uh, Mrs. P jumps up savagely to slap his face. Mrs. F tries to stop her, calling her Mrs. F, and this confuses George. Just then, Doris enters, and Mrs. F asks her why she is not without, not with Charlie Spence. because she knew that they would have to go out so doris tells her to mind her own business but mrs p cuts her short she says that she would not have her daughter talking to anybody like that doris doris looks at her father for help but he expresses his helplessness uh mrs pearson asks doris to answer mrs f politely doris tells her that she has cancelled her going out with charlie spence as her mother had said that he had buck teeth uh, and was half witted as i have told earlier when mrs f protests mrs p tells that uh, she could ma- manage her family george expresses his surprise when he sees mrs p insulting her friend her friend here means mrs f but mrs p snaps back at him telling him to go to the club this was too much for the real mrs p to bear she wants all this to stop right now so she protests telling the real mrs f that it was quite enough george and doris are confused now mrs f tells them that she wants to uh, have a private talk with P- mrs p and would be obliged if they leave them alone for a few minutes george and doris go out the real mrs p uh, now mrs f wants to change back as she could see a great difference already many things have got changed everyone's behaviors their originalities their attitude towards her everything is same now and now mrs f chants the same word and they revert to the original personalities while mrs f had enjoyed the change mrs p had not mrs f advises mrs p not to be soft and waste all these efforts of course mrs p feels that her family would behave better but is not sure how she would uh, explain her behavior mrs f tells her not to be soft and make sure that they behave well she asks mrs p if she would not enjoy them staying at home at times or helping out whether they enjoyed or not mrs p admit 
that she too would enjoy her leisure at times and spend that time playing cards. When Mrs. F le leaves, uh, the three, that is George, Doris and Cyril, looks, look anxiously at Mrs. P, who smiles. They are much relieved and smile back at her. Mrs. Pearson tells them that since they have decided to stay at home, they would have a nice family game of rummy and then the children could get the supper ready while she talked with her father. All of them agreed. Mrs. Pearson wishes Mrs. Fitzgerald goodbye and the family comes together round Mrs. Pearson. Uh, here the chapter ends, I suppose. I hope you all understood it very well and would obviously do better at your tests and exams. So all the best and keep listening.